So now we come to the next verse, which is the dua in Surah Al-Fatiha. The greatest dua, the best dua, the dua taught to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say it day and night at least 17 times. I'm sure you all know this dua. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Very simple. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. We say this 17 times. And it's interesting here when we understand what's, what's the sirat al mustaqim. What is the straight path? What is the straight path? The straight path. All the opinions, they rotate upon one meaning. Some of them said it's following the Quran. And other scholars of the Salaf said, no, it's, uh, they didn't say no, they said it's following the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu So those Mufassirin like Ibn Kathir said, okay, all their opinions, they again, they rotate about one thing. There's one single word that sums up everything, all these things that said. Does anyone know? There's one word that sums up following the Quran, and following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu what is it? Not Sunnah? Okay, not Mustaqeem, it's one word that sums up all this. When I give you the answer, you'll all laugh. What's this one word that sums up all this? Following the Quran, following the Sunnah. One word. Huh? Pardon? Okay, not Tawheed, one word. Something that encompasses everything. Well, Islam. How about Islam? <laughs> Islam. That's what Ibn Kathir has said. Islam. SubhanAllah, we say this every day. Guide us to the straight path. What is the straight path? It is Islam. So, okay, now I'm sure you're all wondering. Okay, wait a second. We're Muslims, okay, and we pray. And in prayer, we say, We're Muslims, and we ask Allah to guide us to the straight path, which is Islam. How does this work? Does this make sense? Ibn Kathir said the exact same thing. He said, how come if we're Muslims, we, uh, we sit and we say, المستقيم, in prayer, yet we are Muslims. He said, there's a secret behind this. Because if you look at the dua, we say it, what, day and night, before sunrise, at dhuhr, at asr, near sunset, at isha, day and night, we say this, Ibn Kathir said, the reason behind this is that it means keep us firm on that straight path. We need help and aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm on that straight path. That's why we keep asking him, إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ To keep us firm on that straight path. And that's something interesting. Ibn Rajab, Ibn Rajab, another scholar of Islam, he said, he said something else, something more. He said, asking Allah guidance, a Muslim asking Allah guidance, saying, al is, He is asking Allah, it means he's asking Allah to complete his faith, to complete his guidance. I'm sure because every Muslim, he is lacking in some aspects of Islam. He is lacking in knowledge. He doesn't know all acts of worship. We all keep seeking knowledge. I'm sure everyone, even myself, until today, we still seek knowledge. Until we die, we still seek knowledge. Before we die, Till the last breath, we try to seek knowledge and act upon that knowledge. So when you say to Allah, when you say, when we say in the dua, إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ We're asking Allah to complete our guidance, to complete our knowledge of Islam, to complete our acts of worship. And that's something beautiful that Ibn Rajab has said, SubhanAllah. So this is the most important dua to a Muslim, and it's taught to us by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so staying firm on that straight path, is the most single most important thing in our lives. And that path, that straight path, it is the path of success. It is the path of those winners. It is the path to paradise. You want to be successful? You hear, you hear these, you, you see these books, self-development self -develop, self books saying the way to success, the road to success. Hey, you want real success? I'll tell you what real success. Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسْ And whoever is removed away from the fire and admitted to paradise, he indeed is successful. خلاص, Allah Azza wa Jal has told you, the successful people are those who will enter paradise. It doesn't matter if you lose something in this dunya. It doesn't matter if you feel, if you feel that you failed. Hey, as long as you're Muslim and you're doing everything you can, to become a strong Muslim and enter paradise, inshallah, you are of those who are successful. 
Because the one who told us this is Allah who created the heavens and the earth, who knows everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows what is what true success is. You don't need validation from anyone, okay? Just stick to the straight path until you, until you meet your Lord. And inshallah, you'll be of those who are successful. What about loss? What about those losers? We hear people claiming, calling people losers. What's true loss? Okay, again, let's go to the Quran. What does Allah tell us about true loss? Allah Azza wa said, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ Subhanallah. Say, indeed, the losers are the ones who will lose themselves and their families on the day of resurrection. That is the manifest loss. That is the true loss. The clear loss It's losing yourself and losing you, those loved ones, your family, in hellfire. And if we look at this, in dunya, there's always a way to make up for our mistakes. It doesn't matter if you fail in something, you can make it up, you still have a chance. But if you lose in the hereafter, that's it. That's for eternity. That's why when I see some of my friends, whether that be in university, I remember sitting with some of my brothers. He said, well, the exam last week, I didn't do well. I'm a failure. Good, listen, brother, you know, you memorize the Quran. Allah says true failure is those who will lose themselves and their family the hereafter. And it doesn't matter. These things, you can make up. You can make up for these small things in life. But in Akhirah, you can't make up for that. If you lose Akhirah, you lose everything. You lose everything. Especially for those, it's a lesson. If you lose something in this dunya, tell yourself, look, listen, I might be a loser now. Okay, I might, I might lost a lot of things, but I'm not gonna lose Akhirah. I'm not gonna lose Akhirah. Akhirah, inshallah, I will be successful and I'll be a winner. It doesn't matter, this dunya is going either way. I'm not gonna live what, how many, 1,000 years? I'm gonna live 100 years max, 120, then I'm gonna die. But I wanna be one of those successful people on the Day of Judgment. I wanna be of those, those that are winners, that are, those are, that are successful, those of the highest status in paradise. And that who we should all aim for. We should, all, we should all aim to be of those successful people, to be truly successful. So that gives you true meanings to the word successful. Next time you hear the word success, what comes into mind? Jannah, not anything else.